Hi there, this is Eugene Blanchard, and this is part four of the do-it-yourself dyno, and this one is going to be called Proof of Concept. So what we're going to do is talk about sensor improvements that we can do, uh, make our sensors a little bit quieter. Uh, we're going to modify the look of the display, make it look a little bit more modern, uh, modify the range of gauges so that way it's uh, within the ranges of our, our uh, outputs. Uh, we're going to do a test run, and then we're going to examine the output. So for this... Uh, uh, proof of concept. What I did is I used some earbuds. We don't want it to act like a microphone. We just want the coil to pick up the magnet. So what you can do is over top of the uh, ear part here, we can stick some black electrical tape. Actually, I did that. I found that it improved it immensely. Another option is if you can take off the cap uh, on the top here. Uh, some of them are removable. What you can do is fill the uh, inside with black silicon or any RTV compound or anything like that that's going to stop that coil from moving. Uh, what I thought I'd do is I'd show you some of the uh, configurations that you can do with a uh, simple dyno before you start. So one of the things, I don't like the colors. I don't like the setup. It, uh, what you can do is right click. I'm right clicking on the RPM here and you can set the colors. I'm going to set the background to a nice black, say OK. And then what I want to do is I got to set the colors to the axes and I'm going to set it to white. And then what I want to do is change the uh, pointer and the pointer is called the data and I'm going to change that to red. So that, that gives a sort of more of a modern look to it and what you can do is you can go down to set colors and you can apply to all and I've applied to all. Okay, I'm just going to pull this roller out of the way here so that way we can see the pull down menu. I right click on it and this is where I was talking about the set color. So you can set color to the background, the axes and data and you can apply to all. So when I do uh, set color to the background I can select black or I can set blue and it comes up as blue. You can also set the uh, range of the y-axis. So if I click over here, uh, we can't see it. So what I'm going to do is just drag this out of the screen up here. Uh, it says y range maximum. Click here, and I'm going to say 3,000. I hit enter, and now what we see is the range has changed to 3,000. Now we're ready for uh, to actually do our first run. Uh, what we're going to do is hit the power run button. Uh, that's going to get it ready to uh, start recording and analyzing. Uh, then we're going to save the file name. Uh, it's going to. I'm saving it as March twenty fourth dash two. And now we're ready to start. So I've got this started, turned on the uh, motor, and we're getting our first uh, run here. Uh, what we see is that I hadn't uh, ranged my RPM. It's at 6,000, so we know that it's only going to be about 1,200. I've turned it off, and uh, uh, now what happens is this is just a roller idling down. Uh, what we see is our roller RPM is over here, 799. Uh, this is our RPM 2 of our motor. Uh, one of the things you'll see here on this side is that yellow is the motor RPM. It gets very small and now this is going to drop out. So basically uh, uh, we would need to set the uh, threshold a little bit lower here. I'm running two channels. Or I only needed one uh, for the dyno. And then basically it'll drop down to uh, and then when it considers that it's stopped it, and then when it finishes then we'll, we'll pop up the uh, analysis automatically. At the end of the run, um, it'll automatically open up into the power run curve fitting. Uh, this is what the power run curve fitting looks like. This is called the fifth order polynomial. Uh, what we have is we have our raw data. This is in green coming up here. Right? Uh, we also have our fit data. This is the ideal curve that we're trying to get into. And then what we also have is our torque curve in light blue here coming up here. And we have our power curve. I'm not sure what the units are on the torque curve on that. I don't see anything here that says what it is. 6.06. .06. 
and then maximum is 694 for a power curve so maybe that might be um, watts I'm not sure this might be foot pounds and that so what we can do is we can change the fifth order poly and we can make it into what they call the MA smooth and now we find out that it smooths the curve out and what we find is that our, our raw data and our fit data match uh, what you can do is go stop fitting we can go to the analysis when we go to the analysis what we end up with is a graph with a lot of uh, information on it. Uh, when it first comes up, uh, all of it here is going to be time, 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 right? So then what you do is you set your x-axis for time, and then your y-axis I've set to power, power is it, and then you set the units as you know, HP for horsepower, or uh, uh, watts if you're in uh, metric, and that's, so here's my power, my power curve comes up like this, and what we see is our peak power was 1.14 horsepower at 3 seconds. Uh, I set my second one for roller torque. Uh, roller torque is in uh, foot pounds, the units I've set it for, and it's the red line. It comes up here, and my roller torque maximum was 6.19 pound feet at 2.86 seconds. Um, I also set my third axis as RPM one roller, so th this will give us uh, RPM one rollers over here in green, and basically it shows the RPM as it goes and it goes to about uh, let's see if they have the peak here the peak was 1200 RPM at 3.67 seconds now this is one-third of what the motor RPM is the motors three times that so that's uh, 3600 RPM which is about right for that motor